Hey guys, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell. And uh, one of my viewers uh, brought this to my attention the other day, and uh, I really think that it that it helps or that it highlights uh, one of the biggest problems that we see right now in the current scientific process, uh, and that's assumptions. You know, we have we have hard, solid facts, and then we have assumptions, and and it's it's one of these things that is really it it, it, it <clears throat> plays a big part in the Carolina Bays, uh, and and I really saw it here with this video as well. So I wanted to go ahead and show this video, and then we'll talk about it. So. So let me get right to that. On my heart was crossing the creek in York County. And in the process of doing that, he discovered a tooth of a mastodon and the right half of the right jaw. The next thing he did, bless his heart, was he went to four different places to get it identified. And I happened to be the fourth. I gave him the identification. We went to the field. He showed me where he thought it would be uh, if we were searching for any other parts of it. Uh, his pinpointing of it came within three feet of where I discovered the, the feet, the bone, the foot bones. And then um, we arranged to have a company come and excavate this bush uh, a company from um, Williamsburg uh, dug out four and a half feet of material, opened it up so that we could get people in there digging. We worked there for from late July to early November, and in the process, we came up with a, two tusks, uh, basically a good part of the rib cage, a paucity of meat bones, and we also found foot bones miscellanea. The left tusk is was lodged 19 inches in very hard ground when the animal went up on its hind legs and over backwards. That tusk went into the stream bottom, parts of it flew, and on five feet of it probably was driven back into the brain. After this, uh, we found the uh, right tusk, which is eight feet, two inches. We, we expected to find next to the skull and the tusk the neck bones, but the breast of the specimen had been decapitated and rotated 150 degrees, and the rib cage and the teeth were in the wrong direction. So something moved it and something decapitated it. As a result, it, we could narrow it down to humors because that could explain the decapitation and the rotation. Um, as, a, as a result, we think that humans killed it about 16,260 years ago because that's the date on the wood that was lodged in the left tusk. The specimen was studied, uh, measured, photographed, repaired, and so forth between July and November, two years ago. We worked on it here almost every week uh, for those two years, and then it's been shipped to the Livy Museum, where hopefully it will be well displayed. Okay, so that was uh, Jerry Johnson. Uh, he's a retired professor from uh, William & Mary uh, College up in Virginia, and and I, I don't fault him at all for this, and uh, you know I, I really don't want this to tarnish his legacy or anything like that. You know I think he's probably done a great job. Uh, and, and the work that he's done on this Mastodon site alone, it, you know, is definitely, you know, definitely worth everything that he's done. So, um, so I, I definitely don't want to tarnish that at all. Uh, but again, you know, <laughs> he, he, there's a difference between facts and there's a difference between making assumptions. And, and most of the time, those assumptions are based on preset narratives. And um, so let's just take a look at that. I mean, you know, from what he said... You know, we've got facts versus assumptions here. You know, the facts are, you know, that we have a mastodon that flipped over backwards at the time of his death. Uh, the left tusk of this mastodon was embedded 19 inches into hard, compacted ground, or as I think he actually said, you know, the stream bottom. Uh, parts of the tusk flew from the site or flew from that area. Uh, we have a five-foot section of the tusk that, that was literally driven through the skull of the mastodon and through the brain. Um, and, and also note that 
the wood that they used to carbon date this site was found embedded in that left tusk that was embedded in the stream bottom. Uh, the right tusk measured eight feet, two inches, and the skull was found decapitated from the mastodon and rotated 150 degrees. And this entire site is buried under four and a half feet of sediment. <laughs> so obviously, right, it must be human 16,000 years ago. Um, that's that to me is a huge problem. And again, we have we have these these assumptions based on narratives that have been set. You know, we've got this Blitz uh, Creek narrative that that you know hunters hunters and gatherers came across the Bering Land Bridge and and killed off all the large mega mammals at the end of the last ice age. Um, you know, regardless of the you know the short faced bears and all that kind of stuff that we talked about in one of the uh, in one of my previous videos. Uh, but in this case, you know, this this is specifically from this website talking about this site uh, where, you know, they, they say that we had a hunting party killing a Macedon, you know, perhaps for ritual more than meat. Um, and that's just, again, 100 percent assumption. Uh, there was zero evidence of a, a human caused, you know, hunting party killing this Macedon. Nothing, you know, no evidence of that at all. Um, and so it's kind of ridiculous that this is where they went to with it, you know, and again, from what we've been talking about from day one here, um, you know, a much more plausible cause for this event to happen, uh, would be something slamming into the Laurentide ice sheet, you know, as it was coming across our atmosphere, setting fires to, you know, 10% of the biomass, um, you know, after it hit the Laurentide ice sheet, you know, huge chunks of ice being, being flown across the continent, you know, the shockwave alone could have decapitated a mastodon. Uh, so, so this is, I mean, all of these things are lining up. Um, I really, really, really think that we need to uh, reevaluate what happened here. You know, we, we've got to get away from these preconceived narratives and, and, and basing our assumptions on those narratives. We have to look at the facts. We have to look at the geology of the areas uh, and, and we have to formulate a new, <laughs> a new narrative, uh, the one that is much more plausible. So anyways, guys, I wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I found it kind of shocking. I hadn't heard of this before. It's, it's fairly new. Uh, and so I just wanted to, to put it out there and, um, you know, you guys let's talk about it. We'll talk to you later. Bye.